Welcome everyone to this video on the pullback of volume forms. Now in differential geometry, volume forms are special types of differential forms that allow us to define a notion of volume on a manifold. Now today we'll focus on area and then we'll generalize it to n dimensions. But when we perform a change of coordinates during integration or consider a smooth back between manifolds, we need to understand how these volume forms transform under the pullback operation. Now this is where you're going to be using the Jacobian, you're going to be doing a coordinate change and uh, you may need that for, for integration, it's most commonly when you first encounter in vector calculus. Um, and now here's the theoretical underpinning for that. So this transformation is closely related to the determinant of the Jacobian matrix of the map. We'll see all the details of that. Um, now let's make a start now, volume forms, the highest dimensional forms in a space. And in two dimensions, you have the volume form, which represents the area. And we've seen that in the introduction to the two forms. And then in three dimensions, you have the volume, which I've shown you in the introduction to three forms. So have a look at those videos. And this is the final video in the series at the moment, uh, but it's relevant to integration among other things. All right, so let's make a start. Okay, so we have, Two smooth manifolds, M and N. You're probably sick of them by now. We've had them in so many videos. This will be the sixth one now. And also in the push forward series as well. So that brings it to about 12, I think. Okay, so and we've got a smooth map. F is a map from M to N, which takes points on the manifold M and maps and points on N. And we want to find the pullback of some two form, omega F of P, under F, this map F. That is, we want to find the form of the pullback omega f of p, and we use f upper asterisk to denote the pullback, as you have in all the other videos. So we have our manifold m, we have a point p on it, we have our manifold n, we have a point f of p under this map, f is a map from m to n. We have um, uh, the tangent space of the manifold m at the point p, I'm not showing any vectors here, I just don't want to clutter up my diagram. Um, and over here we have the um, dual or uh, sorry we have the tangent space to the point f of p on n so the tangent space to the manifold n at the point f of p and then above these we have the cotangent or dual tangent spaces i've drawn them separately so as not to clutter up the diagram but they occur at the point p and f of p they're coincident with this tangent space this is the space here of forms all right and this is the space here of vectors these two spaces are the same, but for the sake of not messing up and producing a very cluttered diagram, which is hard to read, I'll simply separate them. You know? And that's there's no other meaning to it than that. So the cotangent space or dual tangent space of manifold M at the point P is this one. It has the form omega P at the point P. Um, we over here we have the cotangent or dual tangent space of manifold N at the point F of P, and we have a form uh, at the point f of p and then we have the pullback here f upper asterisk okay so f takes us from m to n f is a map from m to n and the pullback takes us then back the other way so it takes a form here as, and we'll go through the detail shortly and pulls it back to a form over here now if this form here is a two form then this one over here will also be a two form all right I'll just hide that now and then we'll, we'll go on and next bit. All right, so for a smooth map F that maps M to N, the pullback F upper asterisk is a map of the uh, space of two forms from on N to the space of two forms on M. Okay, this is for our example that I'm going to use shortly. Alternative notation is this capital lambda here. So F star upper asterisk, remember F lower star is the push forward. Okay, I'm not touching on that in this video, but just the lower asterisk down here is the push forward. The upper asterisk here is the pullback. So this is the space of two forms on N, the space of two forms on M. Uh, so it takes a two form on N to a two form on M, preserving the degree of the form, as I've just mentioned in the previous slide. And here's that same diagram again. So we're going to have some, for the next couple of slides, it's going to be a two form here and we're going to pull it back to a two form over here. All right. So given some two form here, 
what form will it take over there? Well, let's have a look. All right, so let's say our map has a form f of x, y is u of x, y, comma, v of x, y is u, v. So this is a map from x, y to u, v. So let our two form on n, the target manifold, the second manifold, if you like, be omega f of p as du wedge dv. Okay, um, I've chosen to continue to use the point f of p and p. Um, I don't have to, I can talk about it in generality and remove all this and just call it omega, and you'll see that later in the video when I talk about generalities. I'll talk in a strong sense. So here's just a reminder we're going to take a, a two form over here, which is du wedge dv over here. And under F, we're going to pull it back over here. We want to know what is, what is its form over here? What shape does it take? All right. So as shown in previous videos, we know that the pullback omega F of P obeys a naturality condition. F asterisk here, omega F of P is F asterisk du wedge dv, which is the pullback of the individual one forms wedged together. All right. And that's how we've done it in the previous videos. But there is another method, and that is the purpose of this video, and it points towards in integration on manifolds. So we do need to cover it. But there's also a, another way that is very useful when pulling back volume forms, such as during a change of variables when integrating. And that's what I'm just saying here now. I'm just showing you another method besides just pulling back the individual one forms. We can pull back the whole thing, the whole two form or n form or whatever it is. Uh, and that's that's the purpose of this video to show you that method. All right, so. For this example, a general example, our change of variables is x, y to u, v. We're going from x, y on m to u, v on n. Okay. All right. Well, if you have a look at the differentials here, if you want, um, we need this. Well, what's du? Well, du, according to this here, du will be partial u, partial x times dx, partial u, partial x times dx, plus partial u over partial y times dy. Okay, that's for the first function in that pair. All right. And then for the second, we're going to have dv, the differential dv, this one here, what is it? Differential dv. So basically we're taking the differentials of these and writing them in terms of the other variable, the xy variable. So dv up here, dv here, will be partial v on partial x dx plus partial v on partial y dy okay so a total differential all right given this is our function f of xy next all right so du wedge dv is then this object wedged together if we expand it out take the first term here partial u partial x dx wedge with the material in parentheses here the expression in parentheses here plus this Second term here, partial u with respect to partial y, dy, wedged with the material in the parentheses here, expression in parentheses here. Then uh, we have a look here, we're going to have dx, wedge dx here, and we're going to have dx, wedge dy here, and partial u, partial x times partial v, partial x here, partial u partial, over partial x times partial v on partial y, dx, wedge dy. And then over here, same thing, but this time dy, the opposite order, wedge dx, partial u, partial y, partial v, partial x. And then plus finally, we're going to have partial u, partial y, this one times partial v, partial over partial y, dy, wedge dy. Now, dx, wedge dx will be zero, and dy, wedge dy will be zero, so they're gone. Next line down, just keeping the second and third terms here because these are zero, first and fourth. Um, now, uh, we then have dx wedge dy, and here, dy wedge dx. Now, we can reverse those, but in doing that here, reversing it, we have to take into account the anti-symmetry of these forms, and we have to put a minus sign here. So we have partial u on partial x times partial v on partial y, dx wedge dy minus partial u on partial y times partial v on partial x times dx wedge dy. That gives us this object here. We can factor out the dx wedge dy here. Okay, now just stop for a moment. Just think carefully because that looks a bit like the determinant, right? For a two by two matrix, that looks like a determinant. So if you had 
partial u, partial x, partial v, partial y, partial v, partial x, partial v, partial y here, and you took the determinant of it, you're going to get this object here. So in other words, what this is, is the determinant of the Jacobian. All right. So this is the determinant of the Jacobian. All right. If you look at that, if I take the determinant of this in here, determinant of this is this object here. And what's this object here? It's, it's, the, it's the Jacobian and it's the determinant of it. If you look back to the other videos on the pullbacks, we were looking at the Jacobian in order to do the push forward. Okay. Now we're taking the determinant of it. So you can see how this works out here. Next bit. So our result is the pullback of omega at f of p. That's over here, our two form du wedge dv. So we want the pullback of du wedge dv is the determinant of the Jacobian dx wedge dy. So uv coordinates in this space and under the pullback takes us back to the xy coordinates over here at omega p. So that's how this is related to that one. That's the point of this video. And as you can probably guess by now, it, you can just scale this up to any number of dimensions. All right. So as an example, we want to find the pullback for the two form du wedge dv, let f of xy be 2x and 3y, comma 3y, u of xy, v of xy is uv. So f of xy equals the coordinates uv on the target manifold. We have some form, two form on that target manifold du wedge dv and the Jacobian here will just be this partial u partial x partial u partial y partial v partial x so on so on and when we do that perform these partial differentiations we're going to get well this one partial u with respect to x is just two partial u with respect to y is zero partial v with respect to x well there's no x there that's zero partial v with respect to y you're going to have three now, if you take the determinant of this two by two matrix here, you're going to get two by three minus zero is six. So the determinant of J here, the Jacobian is six. So the pullback under F, under this map F here, is F star du wedge dv is six dx wedge dy. And this indicates that the map F scales areas by a factor of six. All right. Let's just keep going then. So let's just take the general case now. Um, so let's introduce local coordinates x1, x2, xn on M, right, n-dimensional manifold, and z1 to zn on the target manifold N. The map F can be expressed in local coordinates F of x1 to xn is z1, z2, zn. Now z1 will be a function of all these coordinates. Z2 will be a function of, well, some or all of these coordinates. Zn will be a, a function of some or all of these coordinates. And Z1, uh, as I almost said, is Z1 will be a function of some or all of these coordinates. Okay. Um, the Jacobian matrix J of the map F is given by this. All right. In the general n dimensional case, that's these. So all that. So n by n matrix. The determinant of the Jacobian, well, I won't try to uh, display the here other than you know how to take the determinant of matrices. Determinant J measures how the map F scales volume locally all right that's what it's doing that's what the the uh Jaco the determinant of jacobian is measuring how the um how the map scales volumes locally all right so suppose omega is a volume form on n and in local coordinates it can be written as omega is q of z1 to zn so this is on n okay uh, dz1 wedge dz2 up to wedge Zn, where q is a smooth non-vanishing function. The pullback of omega under f is defined to by f asterisk omega is q of, that goes in there, substitute that in there, f of, all right, times the pullback of this form here, this n form, okay? By the properties of the pullback operation, we know that now in the previous videos, we were pulling back each one of these individually and then putting them together and so on. This method here, pulling back in one hit, is more convenient, it's quicker, and it shows you why when we have a change of variables in integration, we need to find the determinant of the Jacobian. 
where we change uh, load. So in vector calculus, if that wasn't clear, now you can see why we need to do it. Okay, so um, here we go. So we need to pull that back here. And we know we need all we then need to do is replace that with the differentials of the coordinates on the original manifold on the first manifold multiplied by the determinant of the jacobian okay that's the pullback of this bit so hence the pullback of the whole volume form omega is q of f of x1 x2 xn times the determinant of the jacobian for this transformation times the wedge product of the differentials of um, the first manifold that we're pulling it back to all right so an intuitive interpretation now so the pullback f star omega tells us how the original volume element omega on n translates to a new volume element on m via the map f the determinant of the jacobian determinant j acts as a scaling factor that adjusts the volume based on how f stretches compresses or distorts the space locally so the determinant of the jacobian is greater than one the map F expands volumes. If the determinant of the Jacobian, sorry, is less than one, the map compresses volumes. If the determinant of the Jacobian is zero, the map locally collapses volume to zero, which indicates that F is not locally invertible at that point. And now just conclusion. So the pullback of volume forms using the determinant of the Jacobian matrix is a crucial concept for understanding how volumes and more generally higher dimensional measures change under smooth maps. This approach is widely used in differential geometry physics and particularly in general relativity where it helps describe how space-time volumes transform under coordinate transformations or changes in the metric structure. So omega is this. This is on this is our n form on the second manifold n, the target manifold, the one on the right. And we want to pull it back to the original manifold m under the map f so remember f took us from m to n and we want to take a this n form from manifold n back to m and that's it that's its form on m so we start with this n form on manifold n and we pull it back to manifold m and it has this form here the determinant jacobian the differentials of the coordinates on the manifold that we're pulling it back to which is m and Q here, which was a function of the Z1, Z2, Zn coordinates on N, becomes F of the coordinates on M. Now, F asterisk omega is Q of that times the determinant times of the Jacobian, this times that wedge product. Now, the pullback is opposite to the map F, but we can have a map F going from one manifold to another. So we, we could, um, we could in, uh, start off having a map from from a function defined as a function f of uv to coordinates x y and we could then pull back from x y to uv it just depends remember the pullback is opposite to the direction of the map whichever direction of the map is f from m to n or n to m whichever you want you're pulling it back in the opposite direction to the map all right i hope um i hope everyone you found that useful um if you will please do me a favor and um if you will please do me a favor and and press the like button and subscribe if you will that that helps me a lot i appreciate if you would do that uh either way it doesn't matter i hope you've enjoyed the video i hope you found it useful um and i look forward to seeing the next video so wherever you are in the world take care have a good day or evening as the case may be and i'll see you in the next one all right. Thank you, everyone. Bye.